Thank you, Connie, for that gracious in, uh, introduction. A young girl and her father were walking in the mountains. Suddenly, the girl falls. She hurts herself, and she screams. Much to her surprise, she hears the scream repeating somewhere in the mountain. Curious, she yells, who are you? She receives the answer, who are you? Confused by the response, she screams, coward. Hearing the repeat of coward, she looks at her father and asks, what's going on? Father smiles and says, pay attention. And then he screams to the mountain, I admire you. The voice answered, I admire you. Then the father screams, you are a champion. The voice answers, you are a champion. The girl is surprised, but doesn't understand. Then the father explains that people call this an echo, but really it's life. It gives you back everything you say or do. Our life is simply a reflection of our actions. If you want more love in the world, create more love in your heart. If you want more competence in your teams, improve your own competence. This relationship applies to everything and all aspects of life. Life will give you back everything you have given to it. And I would add, education will also give you back everything you have put into it. It is with great pleasure and immense pride that I join you on your special day of well-deserved recognition, the echo of your accomplishments and your success. There are several themes that I will highlight throughout my comments today. Pride for your accomplishments. This is the beginning of a journey, not a destination. Enjoy the journey. Leadership, you can and will make a difference, and you probably already are, which is the theme of this month's uh, Nurses Month. And enjoy life, be happy, and appreciate your journey. As I reflect on my special day, 54 years ago, yes, I am that old, um, I remember how excited I was to be receiving my nursing diploma, uh, which was before I got my nursing degree, and how grateful I was to have family and friends in the audience, just like you today, to share this honor with me, given their patience and support during those intense study work years, as Connie alluded to, Dr. Dean Delaney alluded to. And I also remember looking forward to going back to what I thought would be a normal life after graduation, with just the usual challenges of balancing work and personal life, and enjoying those extra few hours, maybe reading a novel of my choice, or spending time with friends and family, or doing other things, and I'm guessing you're looking forward to that as well. In reality, my life, as Connie gave you a summary, uh, Dean Delaney gave you a summary, my life has continued from my graduation day to be busy, exciting, challenging, and rewarding both personally and professionally, and I wish the same for you. There is a saying that the young make the mistake of thinking that education can take the place of experience. The old make the mistake that experience can take the place of education. Well, as I reflected on my own life and career, I felt that with education and experience, I could apply my developing skills and knowledge to improving health care and health care systems and my nursing skills and nursing foundation have taken me through every aspect of my career. It has grounded me. Nurses, as you probably know, are the most trusted health professional. We are problem solvers who see signs and symptoms, assess them, evaluate the options, make recommendations, and follow through. Then we evaluate and readjust, always focused on the best outcome for the patient, their family, and the community. These are the same skills used in business and in life, frequently called critical thinking, setting goals, working the process, demonstrating results, very transferable. In preparation for this commencement, I reviewed a bit of nursing history and realized how relevant it is today for today's celebration and wonderful advice for you as you embark on your journey through life and career. Florence Nightingale, a name you know, is the best known nurse in the world. Born in 1820 in Florence, Italy, she developed an interest in the social questions of the day, now called social determinants of health. 
Her parents refused to allow her to become a nurse, as in the mid-19th century, it was not considered a suitable profession for a well-educated woman. Nonetheless, Florence undertook three months of nursing training and then accepted a nursing position. During the Crimean War in 1854, she introduced female nurses into the military hospitals, and then she was called Lady-in-Chief, like our senior executives of today, or chief nursing officers or clinical officers or other titles. She proved that her skills and expertise were broad and produced much improved outcomes. It is said that her greatest achievement was to raise nursing to the level of a respectable profession. Her far-sighted reforms have influenced the nature of modern health care, and her writings continue to be a resource for nurses, health managers, and planners. Let me share three of her quotes. One from 1859. The most important practical lesson that can be given to a nurse is to teach them what to observe. Continue to look and listen as you learn more by telling and reacting more than by telling and reacting. One from the late 1800s, let whoever is in charge keep this simple question in their head, not how can I always do this right myself, but how can I provide the right thing to be done always? That's a great lesson in thinking about collaboration and teamwork. One from the early 1900s, Unless we are making progress in our nursing every year, every month, every week, take my word for it, we are going backwards. Or as someone more recently stated, unless you keep changing and growing, life will pass you by. Another nursing leader was born in the late 1800s, also influenced by war, this one World War I. She was focused on patient health and education. That's a name that should be familiar as well. That was Catherine Jane Densford, a former renowned dean of the School of Nursing. She was an extraordinary leader who combined creativity, collaboration, intelligence, curiosity, and integrity to provide leadership to this school and to the nursing profession, leading change through three decades. She shared, her quote is, knowledge is not enough. It may change with time. Wisdom does not change. Wisdom is knowledge illuminated by understanding and temper tempered by the compassionate heart. The compassionate heart humanizes knowledge, a great reference to nursing. She also believed that every nurse is a leader, as do I and my colleagues on this stage, and I hope you do as well. Being a leader is the ability to think straight, having knowledge of the past, and a vision of the future, skills to do useful service, and the urge to fit that service into the well-being of the community. You can do that in many ways and in many, many roles, many practice settings, university, community, military service, hospital, I can go on and on. You've got a wide array of opportunities. Just remember that you are a nurse and you are a leader with or without a title and you make a difference in people's lives. There are many opportunities for you to build on our wonderful nursing heritage, to take the challenge and be responsible, be accountable for continuous improvement, contributing the skills and talent for the betterment of health care. I had the honor of speaking at the commencement uh, for the University of Minnesota School of Nursing in 2007 long before you were thinking about nursing. And I noted that, at that time, the Wisconsin Nurses Association suggested that nurses in 2010, now think about that timeline, will have pride in and passion for nursing, form partnerships with patients, families, and other professionals, exercise leadership and power, own accountability for evidence-based practice, be as diverse as the population we serve, focus on wellness and prevention, thrive in the workplace, and use technology to optimize and extend effective care. 2010, and it's still appropriate in 2022. Today, maybe with a few more additions, 
uh, given that these last few years have forced us into thinking about adaptability, innovation, creativity, and flexibility. And you've all survived it and learned from it. What an exciting time for you to move this agenda ahead. It's your agenda now. I'll add some advice. Be true to yourself. Know who you are, what you're good at, what you like to do. Don't try to be someone or something else just because somebody else is expecting it of you. Have high self-esteem. Be true to your values. Have integrity and expect it from others. Next, simplify. Life is complex, and frequently we create the complexity, and we have an opportunity to manage it. Tasks and projects are never as hard as they seem if you put them into components and manage the priorities. Don't worry about what's ahead. Go as far as you can, and from there you can see clearer and farther. Next, have ambition. You've obviously demonstrated that. Have the compulsion to strive for something worth achieving. You've done that. You've gone to go through your next phase of this. Be prepared. Know your goal and plan your direction. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, it takes just as much energy to wish as it does to plan. Be willing to change, which you've demonstrated that. Um, this isn't a one-time be willing to change. It's be willing to adapt and take time for reflective questions about what you're doing, about yourself, about your purpose, your values, your actions, and shift when appropriate. Share your learnings with others. Information is power only when shared. And you have an opportunity now to help mentor others while you're continuing your own learning. Create your own harmony by accepting yourself, enjoying others, keep your sense of humor, be grateful, be present, and enjoy your work as well as your family and friends. Enrich your mind, your heart, and your soul. As George Burns, the actor, said, I don't care what you do for a living, if you love it, you are successful. And that applies to at whatever you do for a living. If you continue to be a student, develop or expand a career, if you're a full-time parent or caregiver, love what you're doing, have fun, and be proud. In summary, I would like to congratulate you on this tremendous accomplishment. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of joining you on this very special day, sharing some of my thoughts and observations, and for giving me the opportunity to wish, wish you well in all of your endeavors. I will leave you with this one final reflection from that famous author, Anonymous. <laughs> Grapes must be crushed to make wine. Diamonds form under pressure. Olives are pressed to release oil. Seeds grow in darkness. Whenever you feel crushed, under pressure, pressed, or in darkness, you are in a powerful place of transformation and transmutation. Trust the process. I'm inspired by each of you. You are the hot heartbeat of healthcare. Be well, be happy, be proud, and enjoy life as you create your own echo and your own life journey. Congratulations.